we were searching for uh, great art in a building we, we thought was extraordinary as well. We always felt where workplaces are, there should also be art. You know, Tangeli um, had strokes earlier on. He, he was not in good health and he was not sure if he could really take on such a big task. But then from the commitment to when it actually was finished, many letters and, and many telephone calls and visits and, until it was finally done. Tangeli was very endearing. Uh, he was a workaholic in a way, and he always had a, a, a little team. And um, Seppi Imhov was his closest assistant. And he would always say, well, I'm, I'm the assistant of my assistant. You know, so, because Seppi would, would uh, most often do the welding, and um, Tangli would have some ideas, and can we try this? And then Seppi would bring it, and, and, uh, and uh, Tangli would watch it, or sometimes he would be welding as well. But you know, basically, Seppi and, and one other or two helpers would, um, would quickly try something out that Tangli would, would suggest. But you, know, you can imagine it's a tremendous height that you have to work with and there are about 16 or 18 or something, a large amount of, of motors come down and they all have their own dynamics. And one of the challenges were, were how can I stabilize the sculpture so it, it, that it doesn't all of a sudden starts to swing and destroys itself. So it was a a slow creation of the sculpture that, that nobody knew how it eventually will look until it was finished. He also had some vision of how it could look and he prepared combinations of structures in Switzerland like piles of various possible moving parts. There's a lion's head that is in, in the fountain itself that's, that's fuse out water. This came from the old Hotel Charlotte when we imploded uh, the building to make room for the carillon and so that became a piece that, that he liked to use. And of course for him race cars was always um, something special because he was he had a he had a Formula One race car in his bedroom. So we also have that Ferrari hood uh, he brought from Europe. Over time when he was here to build this sculpture he also talked about accessibility for everybody in certain ways. He said you look little people that come here they have on, on eye level also sculpture parts and tall people also have uh, eye level and everybody has to look up to see the, the top and for him this sculpture it was like a new chapter his health was bad many of his former pieces got darker and darker and darker death was a big theme and this last sculpture um, kind of he felt like i am coming into something new it's a, it's, I, I look up, I see something new and open and not so dark anymore. Tangeli went back to, to Europe a few weeks later. Uh, he was expected to come to Charlotte to celebrate with us the opening of the building. And then a few days before the opening, we learned of, of uh, Jean Tangeli's death in Bern, Switzerland, and uh, we, we were all shocked, completely shocked. Tangli was really an extraordinary individual also. You know, the big hair, uh, he could have a, a black vest with a, with a red bow tie, uh, a suit, black shoes, and black and white socks. So um, you could tell quickly this was not your regular person. It opened in September uh, 91 and um, at the same time 
was also the opening of Tangli Museum, built by Mario Botta. So that's also this coincidence. Um, and you know, we, ha we have uh, uh, the Berkeley Museum of Modern Art built by Mario Botta, and we have wonderful Tanglis there. And um, so it's, a, it's a heartwarming that uh, we have these connections with the city of Charlotte.